What's up everybody? Today we're going to look at the first Mass Effect DLC, Bring Down the Sky. This one was ported over to the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Rest in peace Pinnacle Station, we'll miss you. Sort of. While I was doing research, S slipped my mind that this was the first Mass Effect DLC ever released. And it turned out to be the bad one by a mile. But we know what Pinnacle Station is about, so no need to be the dead horse. But before we get into the video, if you guys like what I do on the channel, could you possibly leave a like and subscribe? It helps the channel out tremendously. And make sure to hit the notification bell so that way you know when I upload. Now let's go ahead and get right into this. Batarian extremists have hijacked an asteroid station in the Asgard system, home to the colony world Terra Nova. The asteroid, known as Asteroid X-57, is on a collision course toward the planet. If it hits, it will be an extinction level event. It will be a scenario worse than the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. Only Commander Shepard and his crew can save the colonists from destruction. You can start this mission after you expose Saren on the Citadel, or you can complete the mission before the last chapter of the game. There is no penalty for doing it later, and if you're playing on a higher difficulty, it's probably better that you do that. As you're heading toward the asteroid, you'll hear a distress call from one engineer. This woman is Kate Bowman. She, her brother, and some of the other engineers were able to hide from the Batarians. It will keep you informed on the enemy as you progress through the mission, while being careful not to alert the Batarians to their presence. There are three fusion torches that you have to shut down. Doing this will slow down the asteroid's descent towards the planet. Each torch facility has certain defenses that you'll have to get through before you can enter them. Facilities 1 and 3 are essentially the same in terms of defenses, mainly heavy turrets, where facility 2 has turrets but also proximity mines that you'll have to navigate. After you shut these down, you'll be able to go to the main facility. When you go to the first facility, you'll meet the Batarians who make their debut here and they're not happy to see us. They sit their varin on us, but they can get it like the rest of them. After you shut down the first torch and are leaving the building, you run to the head engineer Simon, who essentially tells you what will happen if you don't shut down the torches. Basically Armageddon. He'll also ask you to look for his missing engineers. If you haven't fixed it before entering the first building, there's a communications tower on the mountain across the way. Fix that and your map will be updated to show their locations. This is completely optional, but it's a good way to find some good equipment. When you do find them, you'll find that they've all been killed by the Batarians. This is a way to show you how the Batarians operate. They are some brutal sons of bitches. You'll see a bit more of how the Batarians operate in Mass Effect 2 and 3. Their locations are spread across the map or within a short distance of the torches, so you can check out East Station and head over to the torch facilities if you want. Facilities 1 and 3 are guarded by heavy turrets. You can take them out on foot, but I would just use the Mako. Facility 2 can be a pain if you don't know how to navigate the minefield. Since you can't drive over to the building, you're going on foot. You have to make sure to stay a certain distance from each mine, otherwise you know. And if you do get past the mines, you have some materials outside to deal with on top of the drones and the ones inside. After you shut down the second torch, Kate will radio in again, but this time, Balg finds her and threatens to shoot her brother if she doesn't give us up. However, she sadly turns away in defiance and... Balg executes her brother. That hurt my soul a little bit, like, damn, oh, we're definitely glad to see this bastard. After you shut down the last torch, Balg's second in command charge shows up, but we can try to come to a peaceful resolution. He explains that this was just supposed to be a slave grab, but Balak has more sinister plans. He wants to destroy Terra Nova, and we're in the way. Charn is under orders to kill Shepard, but in reality, he just wants to leave, but he and everyone else are afraid of what Balak will do to them if they don't follow his orders. You can convince him to leave if you promise to deal with Balak. You can just kill them, but I want those Paragon points. You will get a pass, and now you can head to the main facility where Balak is waiting. The main facility is guarded by six heavy turrets, three fixed and three moving turrets. It's better to take out the fixed ones and then handle the moving turrets. I like the design of these turrets, it represents a unique challenge that they can take cover so to speak. I'm surprised they weren't used in the games after this. After finishing them off you can head to the facility when you finally get a new arena to fight in. A minor gripe when it comes to the first game is that you fight in the same prefab building or underground facility. The only difference is that the set pieces have been moved around. It's a breath of fresh air to have a new arena to fight in and one that's sort of fun to fight in. There are quite a few Batarians in here and drones. Nothing you haven't seen before, I would take care of the Batarian engineers as they can overload your weapons. After you've taken out everybody, a final trooper will show up and he'll say DIE HUMAN <laughs> HA! You first. Balak will show himself and he'll explain why he's trying to destroy Terra Nova. Basically he is upset over how his people lost territories and resources to the humans and he sees what he's doing as a reprisal for how things played out. It's not the first time something like this has happened. The Skillion Blitz of 2176 happened for the same reasons, among other things. Mainly politics among pirate gangs. But anyway, I don't know if Ballot thought this through all the way. He obviously doesn't remember what happened as a result of the Blitz. The Alliance destroyed major pirate bases in the area in response. Do you really want that kind of pressure on you? You can respond to him any way you want, but at least to him telling you that there are hostages locked away in a room with an explosive that he's prepared to detonate. Unless you let him go. 
This is a dangerous dude, however I wasn't willing to kill the hostages so I let him go. You get a lot of paragon points if you let him go. If you do let him go, to make sure that you can't follow him, Balk left behind three explosive charges around the facility and some defense drones. The time that you have to disable the charges depends on your difficulty. On casual you have 10 minutes while on sanity you only have 2. Get those turned off you'll meet Simon again, where you'll go over what happened, whether you let Balak go or Kate dies. Her work has paid off as now that the torches are disabled, X-57 will miss the planet completely. If you went to the survey stations before you entered the facility, you can tell him about what happened to the engineers. He'll be grateful for your help regardless of that and offer you a reward. Different armors, Corian armor, or if he has some charm or intimidate points, his Omni tool. These are among the rarest rewards that you can get for your current level, so it's definitely worth it. If you attack Balak at the cost of the hostages, the assignment ends right after the conversation with Simon. Three chart courts is all that remains of the former hostages if you decide to survey the damage. If you chose to save the hostages, you have to free them from one of the offices and you'll finally meet Kate. She is glad to be alive but devastated at the death of her colleagues and her brother. She is grateful to us for everything we've done and she claims that we aren't what she expected. Shiver has that effect on people, that's part of the charm. After you finish talking to her, the mission is marked as finished and you can leave the facility, ending the DLC. Can't imagine how much you've done, for all of us. Bring Down the Sky is definitely worth the playthrough, and it would've been worth the money back then. It's worth it to see the Batarians, helping out your fellow humans, and you get a rare item out of it. On top of that, if you let Balak go, he'll make an appearance in Mass Effect 3. He'll be on his bullshit again, but he'll be an asset more than a nuisance at that point. Thank you for watching guys, if you guys want me to continue this series, let me know in the comments, leave a like and possibly subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace. D -D -D